everybody it's so good to be part of this program apologize for the small issues we may have the technical issues that we have but it's it's awesome to be part of this program and i want to say a big thank you to jesus for making it happen and for making you part of it and more i also want to thank the organizers for this privilege to talk and i'm so grateful to god for all the speakers that have spoken ahead of me they've actually said everything almost everything but i'm still trusting that god still have a lot in stock for us let's say a word of prayer together our father we are grateful to you for today we are grateful to you for the girl child Thank you because I am a woman. Thank you for all the women that are seated here listening to us today. Thank you, Jesus. We give you glory. Father, to you we have come. Speak to us again. Let us find ourselves. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Many people have said so many things. But, but I also like to sing a song. You know, every time I'm in a program, women program like this, one of the songs that comes to my mind that I really like to sing is, Lord, I keep on thanking you for making me a woman and not a man. Lord, make me a virtuous one, one whose price is far above rubies. Can we say that song together? Lord, I keep on thanking you. Oh, making me a woman and not a man, Lord. Make me a virtuous one, one who spices far above rubies. I'm not a man, Lord. I keep on thanking you for making me a woman i'm not a man lord make me a virtuous one one whose prize is far above rubies may we be that virtuous woman in the name of jesus a lot of stories have been shared today a lot of things have been talked about today. And I want to thank God for all the things that have been talked about. All the Bible stories that we have talked about. We can all, all we can do is just say, Blessed be the name of the Lord. And I'm grateful to God that God has been a part of, I mean, God, that you are a part of what we are doing today. I actually wanted to talk about some women in the scriptures, but I, I won't want to bore that much again, but I'll make some mention of them. All the women that we have talked about today, especially the women in the scriptures, there are some very important lessons that we can learn from them. I know we have talked about some of the lessons that we can learn from them, but I want to call out one or two other lessons that we can learn from them. I thought of other women that we have not much mentioned today, women like Jael, you know, Caesarea was going to destroy the host of Israel. And Deborah arose, like we have talked about. But Jael was the one that when Caesarea came to her asking for water, she gave him milk and God gave Israel the victory. What of Rahab? She saved her family. I want to tell you today again that you are a gift. 
I am a gift. A woman is a gift. At the creation, when God made Adam, and Adam named everything, God saw that there was still something missing. Something was still missing in the world. Something that needs to bring color to this world, you know? Not many men will wear pink like I'm wearing, wear pink and blue. We are the ones that do all the color. We bring color to the world. God saw that something was still missing. Adam needed a help. Adam needed a gift. A gift is something that you have and gives you joy. Christmas is coming now. It's a time of sharing gifts. You know, every time Christmas time, we buy gifts for our children. We buy them clothes. Some people buy gifts for themselves. People ask that God, I want a Christmas gift. I'm sure that maybe I've also been asked and say, God, I need a Christmas gift. That means you want something that will give you joy. Gift is supposed to give us a joy. And that's who you are. You are supposed to give your family joy, our country joy the nation joy and many women have showed us that we can be just that women like jokebed they gave their country joy they they saved their country women like deborah they saved their country women like abigail you know the story of abigail i like to read that place let's go to first samuel chapter 25 First Samuel chapter 25. Thank God for women like Abigail. Our family was going to be destroyed. All of them, you know. Naba was a wicked man. Abigail was married to a wicked man. Some women are married to wicked men. If you are one of those women married to a wicked man, I pray that God will give you help to overcome and to do it well. Abigail was married to a wicked woman, a wicked man, but she did so well that she could still save her family. And if you are a woman listening to me, that instead of being a, a gift, you are a wicked woman, hey, I pray that God will change your story. He will touch your life and make you what he wants us to be. Let's read 1 Samuel chapter 25. 1 Samuel chapter 25. You know, I want to start from verse 10. I won't read all the chapter. The chapter tells the story of Nabal, of Abigail, and of David. But I'll just bring out some few points in there. Let's look at verse 10. David has sent messengers to Nabal. Nabal said, Nabal answered David's servant, Who is David? Who is this son of Jesse? Many servants are breaking away from their masters these days. Why should I take my bread and water? And the meat I have slaughtered from my sharers. And give it to men coming from God knows where. Then in verse 14, one of the servants told Abigail, Nabas wife. No, let me go back to verse 12. David's men turned around and went back. When they arrived, they reported every word. David said to his men, each of you strap on your sword. So they did. And David strapped his own as well. About 400 men went up with David. Why 200 stayed with his supplies? One of the servants told Abigail, Nabas wife, David sent messengers from the wilderness to give our master his greeting, but he all insulted them. Yes, these men were very good to us. They did not ill-treat us. And the whole time we were out in the fields near them, nothing was missing. Night and day, they were a wall around us. The whole time we were heading our sheep near them. Now think it over and see what you can do. Because disaster is hanging over our master and his whole household. He is such a wicked man that no one can talk to him. Let me go down to verse 28. You know, Abigail did a lot of things. She acted, she planned, and she did some things. And in verse 28, she said, Please forgive your servant's presumption. The Lord your God will certainly make a lasting dynasty for my Lord because you fight the lost battle and no wrongdoing will be found in you as you live. In verse 32, David said to Abigail, Praise be to the Lord, the God of Israel, who has blessed, who has sent you to me today. May you be blessed for your good judgment and for keeping me from bloodshed this day and from avenging myself with my own hands. Otherwise, as surely as the Lord, the God of Israel lives, who has kept me from arming you, if you have not come quickly to meet me, not one male belonging to Naba will have been left blank. Jochebed, Abigail saved a family. Abigail saved a family. David said that if you have not come today, everybody in your family will have died. All the men will have died. But Abigail saved her family. Why was she able to save her family? It was not just only Abigail. Jochebed, Deborah, they saved their nation. And Mary, the mother of Jesus, gave us all salvation. 
God needed somebody to carry Jesus, to carry him as a child. And God found Mary. And he used Mary was part of the story of how today we can be saved. God used Mary. You know, sometimes when I look at the story of Mary, and I ask myself, if God, if I was the person an angel is coming to talk to, and say that, oh, um, you are going to be pregnant with no husband, what of the shame? You know, all the people that have spoken to us today have talked about, sometimes it's tough to get to where God wants us to be. Mary had to endure the shame. Mary had to endure maybe the, the possibility of even death. Pregnancy out of child, out of uh, wedlock in Israel was dead. You know, the Bible even says that Joseph was already trying to put Mary away, trying to cut the relationship short just in private, in a way not to bring shame to Mary. But Mary went through all those. She was a gift to us. She is a gift to us. Because, you know, if Jesus had fallen down from heaven, then he would be a supernatural person. But what God wanted somebody, who though was fully God, was also fully man. This, a lot of women have done great things. In the world today, too, a lot of women have shown that they are a gift. And you are also a gift. To your family, you are. To your nation, you are. To your country, you are. When I was growing up in the Baptist church, they have a program called the I love the program. One of the songs that we used to sing there says, Let no one say that there's nothing I can do. Don't say that I can't be a gift. I'm not. You are. There's some reason why God has created you into your family, into your country, into the world to do something. A lot of women, they did something. Let's look at Hebrew chapter 11. I want to talk about how were these women able to become a gift? How did they do it that they become a gift? How did Abigail do it that she could, in overnight, she could save her family for destruction? Of course, eventually she married David. But if David had come to kill her family, she would have lived without trauma for the rest of her life. All her sons gone. Maybe she too, she would have died. But she was able to do it. Stay with me. Let's look at Hebrews chapter 11. The Bible is without errors. The Bible is sufficient for every issue of life. Every word of God is inspired. And all of them, every word of God is powerful to edify our life. So there's no portion of the scripture that says this one is more powerful. They are all. But I want to read again Hebrews chapter 11. I know you know Hebrew chapter 11, you have read it a couple of times, but let's see what those people say. The Bible told us of different people in the scriptures who did several great things. I want to read that chapter 11. Let's go to, I'll start from verse 30. The scripture says, by faith, the walls of Jericho fell after the army had marched round them for seven days. By faith, the prostitute Rahab, be because she welcomed the spies, was not killed with those who were disobedient. And what more shall I say? I do not have time to tell about Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, about David and Samuel and the prophetess, and the prophets who through faith conquered kingdoms, administered justice, and gained what was promised, who shut the mouth of lions, quenched the fury of the flames, and escaped the edge of the sword, whose weaknesses was turned to strength, and who became powerful in battle and rooted foreign armies. Women received back their dead, raised to life. There were others who were nurtured, refusing to be released so that they might gain an even better resurrection. These women trusted God. Jesus, Mary, the mother of Jesus, trusted God. When the when angel spoke to Mary, she, did not, though she asked the question, how shall this be? But she believed the word of the angel. She said, be it unto me, as God has said. Mary trusted God. These women, they believe God. Agai is a godly woman. Jochebed, she saw that her son was a proper child. The Holy Spirit must administer to her. These women believe God. I know we have talked about, are you a Christian? And all of us have said that we are Christian. But you know, I don't stand as a judge to somebody, to anybody. If you say you are a Christian, praise God. But there are so many people today who profess that name Christian, who bear the name, who carry their name. I remember a song I used to sing when I was a child. He said, the name they call me. My, I'm David, but I'm a thief. The name they call me. I am uh, Rachel, but I'm a, I'm a fornicator. I sleep in a, a guy's house who I'm not married to. The name they call me. I'm Joseph, but I'm, I'm a cheat. All kinds of things. There are many people that say they are Christians today, but the lifestyle 
life they live to, does not tell us that that's who they are. I, I, are you like that? Believe God. It's, it's, the Bible says faith is the assurance of things hoped for. The, the evidence of things not seen. Have a quality relationship with Jesus. That is the ultimate. Have a quality relationship with Jesus. Mary, the mother of Jesus, could save the world. God could use her as part of the salvation plan. Because she had a relationship with God, you can have a personal relationship with God that is real to you. No matter what this world is all about, no matter what you think Christianity might not be, you be a Christian in your heart. Let God say about you. When God is looking at the records of his children in your own country, in your town, at in your city, in your office, let your name be top of the list. Let God say, have you considered my servant Rachel? Have you considered my servant Joy? Have you considered my servant Bidemi? You know, all those things. Let your name, when heavens hear your name, let joy be in heaven that you are a Christian. Have you read your Bible today? Did you read it yesterday? Did you have a quiet time this morning? He says, it's not, I'm not a morning person. Did you have it yesterday? Afternoon? Yesterday? Evening? How dedicated are you to God? You know, this God that may gave us as a gift to the world, he gave us so that we can bring him glory. And the way to bring him glory is to live our life for you. I challenge you as we enter into a new year, that you look at your, re re look your Christian life. Am I really a child of God? Am I really named after God? And if you need to make amendments, please go ahead and make amendments. You know, one great thing about our relationship with God is that God himself is the author. is the one that is pursuing a relationship with us. We are not pursuing a relationship with him. He's the one that is that is the key pursuer. If you come to me, to him, he said, behold, I stand at the door and I'm knocking. If anybody opens their door to me, I will come in and I will die with him. Will you open your door afresh to him this time? What other thing did these women do? They had kills. Abigail knew what to do. That servant told Abigail, you better think, quickly, think of what you can do. You know, she was not just moving around the house. Hey, what will I do now? How will I kill she? Hey, what will I send to him? She knew what to do. The scripture says she quickly did it. We have talked a lot about it. I was in one of the classes, the financial management classes, and she talked about we need to um, get, get skills. Thank God for, for skills. Go get a skill. I like school. I think all the, my life I've been going to school. But going to school is not enough. What are you skillful at doing? I have had women, some girls, say that I don't have any talent. Yes, you do. I don't have any gifts. Yes, you do. There's something that only you can do better. Why do you think our fingers are not the same? Why do you think the thumbprints, there are no two people with the same thumbprints in the world? That's because you are unique. You are you. There's something you can do better. Abigail know how to do it. Do you know that? Have you eaten some people's jollof rice and you say, oh, that jollof rice is, is, is awesome. You want to eat it and over. Have you cooked meals yourself that you eat more than your normal thing you like to eat? You overeat because this food eh, eh, is sweet. Some people are very good cook. Some people are, are fashion designers. When you carry your clothes to them, they do it just well. But some people, you are, I know you are friends. Who says they are tailor? They are fashion designer. But you won't carry your clothes to them. Why? Because when they sew a clothes for you, people will ask you, who is the carpenter that, that sold that clothes? Because of course, it looks like a carpenter that sold the clothes that you are wearing. Because they have not sharpened their skills. Go get skills. If you don't have, get one skill. There's something you can do well. Look inside of you. What do you have? God has deposited something that the world, the world is waiting for your manifestation. They are. You just need to bring it out. There are so many gifts that is in the graveyard, dead there. Don't be like that. Go bring out that gift. And some people, you just need to sharpen the skill. I used to watch football a lot before until my story changed and maybe family and all that and I don't watch as much. But I remember one story that I really cherish. I think it's the story of David Beckham. England was going to World Cup. This match was going to determine whether they are going to go to World Cup or not. It was few minutes to the end of the match. They needed to either win or have a draw. If they don't win or have a draw, they're not going to go to World Cup. And so, 
And um, well, good for them. Towards the end of the match, there was an opportunity for a free kick. And David Beckham was called to take this free kick. Of Well, many people have even taken penalty and they missed it. Many free kicks did not enter the goalpost. Beckham did his own. And it changed the story of his country. That made him a superstar. That free kick, straight to the goalpost. And England qualified for the World Cup. The rest is history. How did Beckham did it? He sharpened his skills. He said that when others are sleeping, when they are in their um, uh, training camp, he will go to the post. He will be reducing the post little by little. You know, I used to see boys when they are playing and they use stone as, as, as post. He will be reducing and be trying and be trying and be trying. And then when the day to show forth came, because he has he has practiced and practiced and practiced. He could do it. You need to sharpen those skills. You need to work on them and make it good. You need to go the extra mile. There's a song I used to sing for my children. That song says, I can do it. And that's the reason why. If I put my heart into it, I can do it if I try. If I put my heart into it, I can do it if I try. Put your heart into it. Sharpen your skills. Get better at what you do. I used to do a radio program. I'm a marriage minister. And people used to ask me a lot of questions. I go to a time when some questions people were asking me, I couldn't answer them. And I saw that I needed to sharpen these skills. I went back to school. I'm reading books. So that when people ask me questions, I know what to answer them. You need to sharpen those skills. Another thing that these women did, I talked about they believed God. They were skillful. Another thing that they did was they were willing to act. They were willing to act. Deborah in Judges chapter 4. Powerful woman. When... Barak came to her. She's a prophet. The Bible says she's a judge and a prophet. In, in, in Judges chapter 4. Open your Bible with me. Let's go to Judges chapter 4. Judges chapter 4. In verse 6, she sent out for Barak, son of Abinoam, from Kedesh in Naphtali, and said to him, The Lord, the God of Israel, commands you, Go, take with you 10,000 men of Naphtali and Zebulun, and lead them up to Mount Tabor. I will lead Sisera, the commander of Jabin's army, with his chariots and his troops to the river Kishin, and give him into your hands. Barak said to her, If you go with me, I will go. But if you don't go with me, I won't go. I don't see women fighting fighting battles in the scriptures and Israel has a history or they know that when God's word comes to them, when God said I'm going to do this, he's going to do it and that's the same thing for you, if God tells you something you better believe it because it's going to happen and the word of God is true, everything God has said to us there, they are true, they are going to happen, you better hold on to it despite the fact that Barak knew that when God says something, he's going to do it Barak still said, I'm not going to if you don't go with me, Deborah was willing to act. Deborah could have said, how can I go to war? I'm not a fighter. I'm not a warrior. But what did she say? She said, in verse 9, she says, certainly I will go with you, said Deborah. But because of this course you are taking, the honor will not be yours. For the Lord will deliver Caesarea into the hands of a woman. So Deborah went with Barak to to Kadesh. Deborah was willing to act. Now, uh, Abigail was willing to watch. She didn't just suck and sit down and say, well, what can I do? Like Eli. Eli said, he is God, though. Let him do whatever he likes. No, Deborah was willing to act. All these women, even Mary, the mother of Jesus, was willing to carry Jesus in her belly for nine months, was willing to go through whether it's shame, whether it's danger, and be the, the, the mother of our Lord. Are you also willing to act? Are you willing to do something? Many people have said a lot of things. Sister Amy, God bless her so much. I enjoyed that time. She said you should write down the goals that you want to achieve. Mommy Odunami has also spoken to Ross and said you should think about what you are going to do. What are you going to do differently? Are you going to just make this meeting? This woman is a gift meeting. Go like that. Very soon, we will write new stories. Five years will come. Two years will come. Six months will even come. What, will you, what story do you want to write at that time? How can you come out and say, I am a gift to my family. I'm a gift to my country. I'm a gift... Even to the nation, God has used me to do this thing. The world is waiting for your manifestation. You know what? It's in you to bring out that gift that God has given to you. I remember one day I was, it was end of the year like this. My husband was invited to preach at a particular place. And um, 
the story of Second Kings chapter four woman was shared. I love that story. I, I really changed my life. This woman, they were going to come and take her children. Her husband, even though he was a pastor or a prophet, was a debtor, and the debtors were coming to to carry their children for slavery. But this woman went to meet went to meet um prophet Elisha. Elisha said, What do you have? Nothing, only a bottle of oil. You too, what you have? That one thing can turn your story around. And that moment, as my husband minister, the pastor minister, God spoke to my own heart. And I made up my mind I was going to do something. I was going to sell something. I, I, well, I've sold before when I was a child with my parents, but it's not like I've had a business myself before. And I told my husband about it, and we agreed. I was going to start selling fish and uh, frozen food. Fish. I was going to start selling fish and chicken. I didn't know how to do about it. I don't even know where they buy the fish or where they buy the turkey. And we didn't have all the money. But we, myself and my husband, we gathered the money, we put it together. We had the money. There was this store close to our house then. Everybody used to go to that store. I asked around. That's where they go to buy their frozen food. I went to that man. I think it was me and my husband that went to him. And he told us all the things. Where to buy the fish. The different type of fish. He told us everything. And then, and you know, people who were, I think that he might see me as a computer to and not tell me but he did and there was another sister maybe she's even here with us today that told my husband what to do and we started the business oh my god it flourished in no time i had the second store i was grateful to god for it and i was very happy it gave me joy i was a marketer well i'm a marketer turned min uh, marriage minister and I used my four pieces of marketing and the word of mouth will work for me. If I sat down and not do anything, I, I won't have that result. I won't be able to share it with you today. If Sister Yemi had said that, well, I've written why I know those times when you write why for like six years and or jam for like six years and you can't get to this investy. You know, life is different now. It's easier to go to several things. So you don't have any excuse. And and, and she continue you to be willing to act something, be willing to do something. Let me tie it up. Like I just want to re rephrase what our other speakers have said by saying, tell yourself a story. A story of how did you get to where you are? Whatever where you are, how did you get there? Tell yourself a story. What did you do? What steps did you take to get to where you are? The second leg of the story is tell yourself the story of where do you want to get to? What do you think God wants you to get to? I remember one time I told my st myself that kind of story. I enjoyed working as working um in a very in a business world in a multinational it was good times and i had very good results but something was missing in me there was actually a time that in my organization they were trying to push women you know so we had less women than men but at least they were trying to encourage women and we had a women organization and they brought this woman this career woman to come talk to her she said a lot of things to who was to be to be very good career woman and while she was talking something tells me i knew inside me this is not who i want to be that's not it i want to be something different and i told my story i said myself a story of where do i want to go to every time i remember the incident i feel bad that i don't even know where i wrote it i've looked for it i can't find it but i still have some of it in my head and i tell you one of that story is the result of me standing up to talk to you. I did so well in marketing. My friends will come and say, talk about you are doing very well. Go to another company. They will pay you better. You are so good. But that's not what I want to be. I, I wanted to be who God wants me to be. And I'm so glad that God made it happen for me. The last leg of that story is, what steps do you need to take to get to it? There are so many things we need to do. And we are all very different. Some people... They just need to go back to school. Go back to school and get a degree. I remember my friend, like three years, I think like three years ago, she got a PhD. I, I was amazed how she got it. She, she was like 50 years at that time. Before, before she got that PhD, she didn't get have a regular job. So she was doing her personal business. But after she got the PhD, she got a lecturing job. So she was still doing the business. And then lecturing, it became a multiple source of income for her. For you, it might be that. Let nobody say that it's too late for me to go to school. In our church some time ago, I saw one mama 
So whether she's 60, just I don't even know how old she was. She went back to school and wrote GSS three exam. There was one man that he Gindi that already married, I have children. He was short nicker and went back to school. If you need to go back to school, that might be you. Just go back. Some people they need to learn a trade. They need to learn a trade. They, we were told about that sister that took us in the financial independence said that after she even finished her NYC, she went to learn a trade. I like the dress she's sewing. I'm going to tell her to make me one. Maybe you need to learn a trade. Maybe you need to learn. I've seen people who have degrees. Unfortunately, in Nigeria, we are taught that we need to just go to school and then get a degree and find a job. Sometimes the jobs are not there, even when they are there. Multiple source of income. I remember one time in my office, one of my colleagues, we were all working together in the same office, and she had a store, a, a fashion store. All of us, we sold clothes from her. Very expensive. Well, people used to sew a lot of clothes from her. She would come to office, collect the other, carry it to her fashion store. It's called multiple source of income. Go learn that trade. Don't say that it can't happen. If one store does not accept you, or if you think, oh, it's too expensive to learn it here, there's one place to start. And you know what? In, in skill learning, the internet is a great place to learn. What do you want to learn that is not there? Is it cooking? Now I begin to you know I thought that if all Nigerian foods are there, I bake bread. I can get bread very, very well. People kill for my bread. Last year I had a visitor, my family came, and the children did not want to go back to their house. They said we like Mommy's bread though. But that learned how to bake and get bread. It was on YouTube. Meat by I make it very well. I'm proud of my, my, my making. I started gradually and I'm getting there because when you are in a place where you can't get the Nigerian food you want, what do you do? You 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 just make it. And I learned them on, on YouTube. You can learn a lot of things by yourself. And internet is not too expensive to get. That might be what you need to do. Some people need to just get certification. You need to add something. One icing on the case that you have. Go get it. Some people need to get married. Not that there are no men following you. There are. You are just closing your eyes to them. Open your eyes. Some people need marriage system to help them get organized. Maybe that's what you need. Some people need to slow down. You know, like me, in the last two weeks, last week and this week, I told myself, come on, you have to slow down. And I did. And I think it was very refreshing for me that I slowed down. Some people need to get up quickly and act. And not wait. You know, when Herod was trying to kill uh, Jesus. The angel appeared to Joseph and said, rise up quickly. Go do it. Some people need to do that. What do you need to do? Don't let this meeting just come and go and you do nothing. I've gone to several meetings like that too and I do nothing. But I've gone to several. I still, and the ones that have done something, the memories, I, I, I'm grateful to God that I do them. What is going to stop you from doing it? The great thing is that among us today, there are so many women of God that can counsel you and there's no need to reinvent the wheel. This is what you want to do. There's no need to reinvent it. They call it in my office still and just reapply. I just, I thought I just told her to learn to make bread and get bread from you too. There are so many people here who have treaded that same path you want to tread. There's nothing absolutely um, well. I don't want to say absolutely nothing new on in the world. There are things that are new, yes, that we get to learn every time. But the processes to even the new things, I don't think they are so new. There's somebody that has done it before ahead of you. Go get help from that person. Don't live today without talking to somebody, without taking somebody details who will mentor you. It's called mentoring who will help you and you can work that process together who will help you become god have used a lot of mentors in life even though the servant that spoke to abigail was not like a mentor to her but that that was like a kind of role of mentorship she told abigail hey come on you have to get up and do something there's danger and abigail listened to her go speak to somebody today don't let this meeting go back in two years time six months time let's see you as a gift to the world you are a gift bring out that gift god bless you buy your hands for prayers i want you to talk to jesus that he will bring out the gift in you I want you to talk to Jesus, that he will, he, he will give you the grace. You can do it. God can do it. God can help you. Let me open your eyes one more thing before we pray. Let me share this last story with us. There was a time in my life when it was so dark, I used to cry. And I asked Jesus to help me, and he did. Ask Jesus to help you too. He will help you. He said, come unto me, all you that are heavy laden 
I will give you rest. Would you pray and say, Jesus, please give me rest. Show me the way. There is a way that God will show you that will lead you to, to greatness, to where he wants you to be. Say, Jesus, show me the way. And he will show you the way.